welcome back to my channel okay um, i am delighted to inform us that we are starting a series all right on gitlab ci cd all right so we're going to be looking at the gitlab from the zero level to the euro level okay and we're going to be looking at a lot of things all right as it relates uh to the gitlab all right ci cd pipeline now as we already know, GitLab is also more like um, a repository, like your GitHub, where you can put your code, you can put your, you know, your template files, like your Terraform template files, your Kubernetes manifest files, and things like that. But in addition to just putting your code, all right, on the GitLab platform, you can also use a GitLab to do, all right, continuous integration and continuous deployment. The same way you can use your GitHub Actions, all right, for continuous integration and continuous deployment, GitLab also offers you, all right, that opportunity as well. Okay, so I I want to assume that if you are going to be going through the zero to euro course, you are already familiar with some terminologies like CI CD. But if you're not familiar with it, of course, we are going to take our time to explain things, okay, and break it down in a way that you are able to understand exactly what we are talking about. Okay, so in this course, like I said, we're moving from the zero level, all right, to the euro level. Now, again, I need to say here that this is not a course about the administration of the GitLab platform. Rather, it is a course that seeks to help our understanding of how we can turn our repository on GitLab into a CI CD, all right, pipeline as well, right? So, let me just quickly show us what to expect. Now, in this course, we're just going to do a little introduction about GitLab. We're going to look at some GitLab core concept. We're going to be looking at the GitLab architecture. And then, of course, I mean, we are going to get ants on. We need to get our ants dirty. And so we're going to be building a pipeline that leverages maybe a Node.js application or any application, really. It doesn't have to be a Node.js application. But, of course, we are going to get our hands dirty. It can be a PHP application, but we have to use an application all right to test the different aspect of the gitlab ci cd okay and then of course we're going to see how we can configure a multi-stage uh, pipeline multi-stage there basically means if you want to deploy uh, to your development environment you want to deploy to your staging environment you want to deploy to your production environment how can you all right set up a all right um uh basically you know a multi-stage all right pipeline and then, of course, we're going to be seeing how we can also, you know, do some microservice deployment on GitLab CI CD as well, where we talk about monorepo and polyrepo. All right, we're going to talk more about that when we get there. And finally, we're going to look at how to deploy our microservice application to a Kubernetes cluster. And then we wrap up it up all right at that level okay so now that we have an understanding of what to expect in this course all right let's get over all right to our console and see all right how to set up our initial all right project okay so let's go and let's get our hands dirty now here I am on the GitLab all right, page. As you can see here, I'm on the gitlab.com and it says, welcome to GitLab. And that's my name right there. All right. And then, of course, I don't have any project that I've created yet. I don't have anything that I've done here. It's just all right, an empty GitLab repository. And we're going to be creating a project together. We're going to be doing a lot of things here together. All right. Now, a few things that I want to just quickly touch on before we create our project and start doing all right stuff. Is the fact that you know the GitLab platform, it's uh, it's a platform that you can call a one-stop shop. All right, platform. Basically, it's a platform that seeks to you know that seeks to make itself all right a DevSecOps all right platform. Basically, when you were talking about DevOps, DevSecOps, and things like that, what GitLab is hoping to achieve that you know it becomes that path platform that you can do everything that relates all right to DevOps and to DevSecOps, which means you may not necessarily have to connect to an external service in order to do anything, which means what they are trying to achieve 
is that they want their platform to be all right that platform that gives you everything you need to deploy your application seamlessly all right a platform where you can visualize your pipeline a platform where you can also host your code repositories a platforms where you can also you know integrate security into your pipeline a platform where you can all right you know collaborate with people all right and basically just do everything that has to do with devops or devsecops right without leaving all right the gitlab platform platform itself and that is exactly what they want to achieve i mean if you look at the gartner all right magic quadrant all right for devops platform in 2023 you will discover here that you have gitlab all right as one of the leader in fact not just one of the leader it is actually leading all right the leaders chat all right right here all right I mean, Microsoft is trailing behind with, you know, with Azure DevOps and GitHub, um, you know, actions. And then you have Atlassian here, which is basically, you know, a Bitbucket and other things like that, right? So in terms of DevOps platform, at least according to Gartner, GitLab is the leading, all right, platform for DevOps. I mean, if you look at this, if you look at this Gartner core, you will see that Git, um, Jenkins is not even featuring here at all which means of course jenkins is still widely used in the industry but it tells you that in all right in a few years time jenkins might not be as much as you know as relevant as it is uh, as it is today okay so if you're learning anything at all you need to understand gitlab ci3 you need to all right get understanding about github actions all right as well now another thing about gitlab all right platform is that in terms of ai as well Okay, it is also one of the platforms that is leading that, all right, quadrant as well. Now, of, of course, I'm sure you've heard about GitHub Copilot, right, which can help you to, you know, it's a code assistant that can help you to view your code, can help you to rewrite your code and do quite a number of things, okay, in terms of, you know, code editing, code aligning, you know, checking your code syntax and your structure to ensure that you're writing, you know, according to, you know, established standards, all right? Now, GitLab also has, all right, something similar to the co-pilot, which is called the GitLab Duo. All right, right here you have the GitLab Duo, right? It's also something like your GitHub co-pilot. Now, in terms of the AI code assistant as well, GitLab is also a leader. All right, is also a leader playing closely. All right, to GitHub. Now, GitHub, of course, the co-pilot is more like the top leader in that space. But of course, GitLab is also not, you know, very far. All right, from the GitHub co-pilot. Right. So this is a platform that seeks to, you know, do anything that has to do with coding, anything that has to do with devs, anything that has to do with DevSecOps. Right. And if you're learning anything, right, you need to also learn these. All right, as well. Now, having shown you all of this, let's get into, all right, the GitLab platform and let's see how we can start creating a project and, of course, practicing, all right, the GitLab CI CD. Now, the first thing we need to do, all right, is to, you know, go to preferences. So here, of course, if you don't have an account on the GitLab CI CD yet, you can just come here. Let me open it up in a private tab. And here, I'll just go to gitlab.com right and i will click on sign in right just watch this i'll click on sign in and then just click on verify here and then here i'm going to say sign in with all right any of this account or you can also register now so you click on register now all right and you can also register with your google account so if you have a gmail account if you have a github account already all right you can you know register with any of these all right accounts and then you will have your account set up on the gitlab platform in just less than maybe one minute or two minutes and then you're done now once you're done you should have something like this all right, you should have something like this. So now let's see how we can authenticate with our GitLab platform because, I mean, we're going to be using our Visual Studio code, all right, to, you know, write our pipeline script and to, you know, manage our code and all of that. But, of course, as we're editing the code, we're also going to be pushing, all right, to the GitLab platform. So that means we need to configure, all right, our SSH key that would allow us to interact with the GitLab, all right, platform. So here, I'll click here and then I'll go to Preferences, all right? Now, on the preferences, I'm going to see SSH keys right here. So click on SSH keys. Now, I don't have any keys, all right, just yet, okay? Now, I can click on add new key and then paste my key here and all of that. But let's see how we can, all right, generate a key on our system and then, you know, copy that right here. Now, here on my Git bash, right, I'm using Windows. So I will open up my Git bash right here. And then if I want to generate a key, I can basically say SSH. All right, I think key, all right, gen. All right, and then I press enter. 
Now, this will allow me, okay, I think that name is not correct. So let's see, uh, I think it's SSH key gen. I guess that's the correct name. All right, so that's the correct name right there. So here, so it's SSH hyphen key gen, okay? So here you can generate an SSH key, all right? You can call it any name. Now, this is going to be the default location of your key. Or in some cases, if you have watched you know, my Linux videos and, you know, some of the videos that I'm doing right now on, you know, DevOps um, Zero to Hero, uh, you can know that if you come here and you type d slash this all right ssh it also means the same thing as this right because i mean this right here it's more like your own directory and then you already have this dot ssh all right that'll be created for you if you don't have it created just yet all right and inside of this place you are going to have your key all right stored ready now i'm not going to go through this but if you need an understanding on how to generate an ssh key i'll put a link all right to one of my videos in the description that shows you how to generate your ssh key how to you know basically put your email and all of that and then i believe that will help you all right a lot now i already have my own key all right generated so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy that key all right my public key basically because when you generate an sh key it is actually generated as a key pair so you have the private key and you have the public key now the public key is what you're going to copy all right and copy all right onto your gitlab platform the private key remains all right on your own system okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here i'm going to say cut all right and then i'll go to that location and then i have that key all right in my name okay so i think it's gitlab and i can remember i think all right no 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 i think i used at all right let me see okay so here is my key so i'm going to just copy this name here so i i know i have two keys i have one for github and i have one for gitlab so i'm, I'm going to copy that one and i'm going to put it here okay so basically i just want to cut basically i want to see the content of that file so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to copy, all right, everything like this. Okay, copy. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to paste it right here. Right. So now I can leave the title here as my email. That's fine. It doesn't think that's a problem. And then I'll say add key. Right. Okay. So let's see what it's saying. The fingerprint, all right, SHA-256 um, has already been taken. Okay. Now. This error that I'm seeing here basically is because I have used this key, right, on another, all right, of my GitLab uh, platform, okay? So I guess that is why it's telling me that, all right, no, this key can be used because, I mean, it's been used on another platform already, okay? So what I'm going to do is basically um, I'm going to have to generate another key, all right, for this purpose, okay? So let's do it together again. I mean, to mean, um, so SSH, I think, key gen, right? Now, you can specify the uh, the key that you want or the algorithm that you want, but I'm not going to go through um, all of that, right? And then I can also tie it to my email, but I'm just going to say key gen. And then here, now, I don't want to use this name right here, okay? So I want to give it a name, all right, I, I can remember, actually. So I'm going to copy this path like this, all right, copy, and then I'm going to paste it here, right? And then I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to give it my own name. So I'm going to say... All right, I'm going to put it like this here. All right, all right, at, you know, GitLab, all right, zero to, all right, zero. Okay, so I'm going to put that name like that. So then I'm going to press enter. I don't need a passphrase, just enter, enter, and then your key has been generated. Now here you can see that, let me try to see if I can expand this view. All right, so here, if you look at it critically, there are two keys that was, that was generated. So this one here, it's my private key. And this other one is my public key. So the one that ends with dot pop is what is my public key. So I'm going to cut this. So I'm going to copy this all right, path, copy that. And then let me clear my screen. So I'm going to do cut, all right, this, uh, no, dot SSH. And then I'm going to put that path right here. And then I'm going to press enter. Now, this is my key here, so I'm going to copy this key just like this, all right? So, copy that, and then you drop it here, all right? So, you can change the title, all right? So, if you want to change it, all right? So, I can give it my name like this, and then I can say add key, all right? So, now the key has been added, and of course, it expires, I mean, one year from now, actually, right? So, the key has been added, basically. So, now... I can go back and then I create my first project and then see how to authenticate, all right, with my um, GitLab CI CD. I mean, that's the first step that we need to do. So click on the icon here, create a project, 
all right create a blank project and then here we are going to call this project gitlab all right zero to hero okay gitlab zero to hero all right that's the name of the project i mean let's make it public because i mean we want people to also have access to these and all of that right so here it says enable static application security testing or right, analyze the source code for known security vulnerability all right now we can enable that of course but sorry we can enable this right now which means it's basically going to scan our code all right in case there's any kind of you know um, security issues with our code basically this does something that is similar to sonicube all right it does something similar to sonicube where it scans your source code and tells you if there's any vulnerability or, or things like that so we're going to enable that right it's i think it's going to help us as we go on okay so let's create a project all right now the project has been created but now because i checked all right creating this file if it doesn't already exist right now because i checked you know that security testing and all of that it generated this uh, stuff for us all right but i don't think we need this just yet okay we don't need this just yet i mean because we're going to look at this as we go on in the course of the class because you may not understand what this is right now all right but as we go on we're going to see all right um you know what we um how we use all right this kind of things right i'm going to explain to us what that means okay so and then we have um all right um, a readme generated for us automatically so what we can do now is to clone, all right, our code, all right, this repository, all right, let's clone it on our local machine, and then we can start pushing things, all right, to this uh, particular platform, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, all right, and for now, I'm going to delete, all right, what I have here. I mean, we don't need it for now, right? We're going to need it um, later on, okay? So let me say, all right, delete. Okay, so we don't need it for now. All right, so let's here. So now I'm going to be cloning with SSH because I mean I've configured my SSH already. So I'm going to be cloning this. All right, with SSH. So I'm going to copy this. Um, come here, copy the link. All right. Now you can open your Visual Studio Code. All right, and then you can come here, and let's see. So here I'll come here and I'll say. Um, this is my source control, so clone a repository. All right, I'm going to put the URL right here, and I'm going to press Enter. So it's going to ask me where do I want to save, all right, the files. So I can save it on my desktop, and then select destination as a repository. All right, so are you sure you want to continue connecting? I'll say yes. All right, so if everything is fine, if my SSH key is configured properly, then I will see something like this. I will say open, all right, in this window. So I'm not opening it in a new, new window. So just say trust the auto, all right. And right here, you can see your code, all right, has been, all right. So you can see the readme file uh, that we have there, all right, already. So here now I've cloned my repository. And in the next video, we'll start getting our hands dirty, all right. We'll start learning about the syntax of the GitLab CI CD. All right, the, the, you know, the YAML syntax, basically. So we'll see how um, that works, all right? We'll see how to configure it, how to use the variables, and, you know, a lot of things that we have, all right, in the pipeline, all right, as we go on, okay? So thank you so much. I'll see you, all right, in the next one. Thank you.